So uh, today I'm going to briefly explain to you about our uh, recent publication in development about uh, the role of natural killer cells as an extrinsic barrier for in vivo. Um, during development, um, cell potency was thought to be unidirectional. So from a totipotent cell situated at the top of a hill, we could observe the formation of cell differentiated uh, cell, cell types. However, in the recent years, it has been uh, described and well stated that cells can go back to a more primitive state in a process called cellular reprogramming. The first evidence of cellular reprogramming was uh, shown by Yamanaka. Basically, uh, what he did was to use uh, cell differentiated cells, uh, in this case fibroblasts, and he um, expressed uh, exogenously four transcription factors. Well, what he observed was that uh, from those cells, uh, he could obtain induced pluripotent stem cells. Uh, nowadays, we know that this process um, uh, basically is formed by a switch off of the somatic program and later on a progressive switch on of the pluripotency program. Um, different intermediate or partial reprogram states have been well documented. Um, we are especially interested in this uh, partial uh, or intermediate state as cells have lost the, their cellular identity, but they are not yet pluripotent. Uh, and we are mainly focused on uh, in vivo, as we have a mouse model that we are going to be calling from now on in these uh, four factors mouse model in which basically we have an RTTA under the promoter of Rosa 26. And we also have uh, our cassette with the four transcription factors that I've just mentioned uh, uh, in a Teto system. So basically, when we give doxycycline to our mice, we are able to express these four factors in all the cells of, of those mice. Uh, the process of in vivo reprogramming in our mouse model has been already well documented. We know that after one week of expressing this OSKM, these four factors, uh, cells undergo what we call partial reprogramming. This state is characterized by a reversible loss of cell identity. If we leave this um, OSKM cassette to be expressed for a longer time, so basically two weeks, we can observe that few cells are able to reach what we call full reprogramming. And this is characterized by the expression of pluripotency markers such as NANOC. If we uh, leave these uh, pluripotent cells to continue ex uh, expanding, we end up with the appearance of teratomas around one month. We are mainly uh, interested, as I said before, in this first part of the process of reprogramming uh, for several reasons. Uh, one of them uh, being that uh, several uh, previous papers have shown that uh, one or various small pulses of these OSKM factors can lead to benefits both in the uh, field of regeneration and aging. In the field of regeneration, it's known that, uh, again, one or uh, several pulses of OSKM can lead to a better healing of the, of the tissue upon a B cell injury, muscle injury, optic nerve crash, and also in the cases of skin wound and myocardial infarction. In the case of rejuvenation, again, one of several pulses of OSKM expression can lead to younger DNA methylon, an extended lifespan in the case of, for example, progeria mice, and also improved vision in old mice. Um, our lab has also uh, published recently that one single pulse of OSKM in all mice can lead to a younger molecular configuration. Um, all these uh, previous studies have focused a lot on the changes that occur in those cells undergoing reprogramming. However, little is known about the microenvironment that uh, surround these uh, cells. So we were wondering whether these uh, cells under, uh, surrounding the cells undergoing reprogramming could be modulating the efficiency of the process. Our question was then, what cell extrinsic factors modulate the efficiency of in vivo partial reprogramming? In this project, we have focused mainly in the immune system. 
the first evidence that we had uh, that the new system could be playing a role in the process of partial reprogramming was when we check this the, the different levels of cytokines in the serum of animals undergoing partial reprogramming here we were comparing our uh, i4f mice versus wild type mice at different uh, time points of the beginning of the process of reprogramming and we could see a significant increase uh, in different uh, cytokines for example interleukin 15 interleukin 6 interleukin 15 is mainly uh, an activator of six has been previously described in our lab to be important for the process of reprogramming uh, interleukin 9 which is mainly expressed by a, by a subtype of t-cells and interferon gamma which is secreted by uh, cyto, uh, cytotoxic t-cells and nk cells um, i'm not showing here this data but uh, we uh, analyzed the expression of uh, uh, the infiltration of immune cells upon reprogramming and we saw that indeed there was an increase in immune infiltration in those organs undergoing reprogramming and we mainly focus on NK cells, natural killer cells, as uh, by doing an RNA-seq, we observed that the most significantly genes related uh, were those ones related to uh, NK cytotoxicity. So um, focusing again on NK cells, we first of all uh, check whether these NK cells were infiltrating our tissue. Here you can see um, how the tissue changes. This is a pancreas. The reason why uh, we focus on the pancreas, and I'm going to be following, uh, uh, focusing on the pancreas during my presentation, is because in our mouse model, we observe that the, the organ that has more uh, reprogramming in these first steps is uh, the pancreas. So when we check for the expression of NK cells using the, an NK1.1 marker, we observe that indeed those cells that were NK1.1 uh, NK positive were infiltrating our uh, uh, pancreas undergoing reprogramming. So uh, in order to understand whether uh, these cells undergoing reprogramming were uh, expressing uh, ligands that can be activating NK cells, we decided to check for the expression of these uh, specific markers. The reason, be the reason being that uh, they have been already described to be important in the recognition of pluripotent cells by NK cells. So when we check by uh, fax the expression of those, those markers, we indeed saw a significant upregulation of RIA1 and MOOD1 in our partial reprogrammed pancreas. These are, as you can see here, NKG2D ligands. We also observe a significant uh, upregulation of ICAM1, which again is an activating uh, ligand of, of natural killer cells, and also uh, CD155. Meaning that indeed uh, these cells undergoing reprogramming were probably um, uh, um, activating NK cells. I'm not showing it here, but uh, we also observe um, that the NK cells under, uh, um, that were infiltrating the pancreas were also being activated and degranulating. So we next wonder whether indeed NK cells could be modulating the efficiency of partial reprogramming. And for that, what we did was um, uh, we reprogram our mouse model for seven days with uh, or without NK cells, so basically uh, with an isotype control antibody or with an anti-NK1.1. Let's first focus on those uh, two conditions. What we observe in our pancreas is that um, here you have a, a wild type um, a mouse. Uh, here on, in the middle you can see how upon reprogramming you can observe the appearances of foci of uh, reprogrammed cells and the appearance of several few uh, uh, nanopositive cells. As I told you at the beginning, nanopositive cells are pretty potent cells. Uh, of not having NK cells, basically uh, animals that had depletion of NK during the process of reprogramming had much more uh, dysplasia and many more uh, nanopositive cells in those uh, pancreas, meaning that indeed NK cells were limiting the efficiency of the process. We next wonder whether by injecting uh, intravenously uh, NK cells, we could reverse this effect and in fact we could decrease the efficiency of reprogramming. And indeed, that's, that's what we observed. Upon uh, exogenous NK cell um, administration, we could see that uh, the um, efficiency of partial reprogramming was uh, significantly decreased and we could not observe the appearance of any nanopositive cells. We next wonder whether these cells that are surviving, that are appearing upon the absence of NK cells could have some uh, special features. Uh, so in that case, what we did in order to answer this question was again, we repeated the same uh, experiment, seven days of partial reprogramming with or without NK cells. 
we isolated the pancreas of those animals and we disgregate them to a single cell level in order to form organoids. In this case, what we observed was that in those um, cells obtained from pancreas in the absence, the reprogram in the absence of um, NK cells, the organoids were much bigger than those ones compared uh, to uh, an animal that under, uh, underwent uh, reprogramming in the, in the presence of NKs. That was, uh, the difference was already observed at day five, and even at day eight, you could observe this difference without the need of a microscope. This result suggests that uh, could be endowed with a higher plasticity. We are currently performing experiments of engraftment in order to see whether indeed these cells are uh, more plastic. And with that, I would like working model uh, in which basically, uh, uh, as I have explained you, upon uh, OSKM expression in an homeostatic pancreas, this pancreas undergoes partial reprogramming. Uh, apart from the formation of these plastic cells, I haven't told you in detail, but we can also observe apoptotic cells and senescent cells during the process of reprogramming. And what I've told you is that NK cells limit, infiltrate the pancreas and limit the efficiency of the process of partial reprogramming. Uh, I haven't had time to, to explain it to you, but in our in our paper in, in development, we also check for the uh, role of other uh, immune cell types, such as uh, GR1 positive cells, which are mainly uh, myeloid derived suppressor cells and neutrophils. And in that case, we observe that these cells promote uh, the process of partial reprogramming. With that, I would like to finish by uh, thanking everybody in the cellular plasticity and disease laboratory uh, lab, especially uh, Manuel Serrano and Daphne Condronasio for all her uh, her help during the process of of, of, of developing this project, and uh, also all, all, all of our collaborators from the different uh, universities and research centers. Thank you very much. Fab, Elena. I I've got a quick question I want to ask you, and then there are a couple online ones. A complementary mm -hmm. experiment to knocking out the NK cells would just be to look to see whether those tissues that are the most amenable to reprogramming are the ones that have the fewest NK cells infiltrate them. Have you just looked to see whether there's a correlation? Uh, efficiency of reprogramming and uh, the infiltration of NKs, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. We haven't, yes, uh, we haven't checked that. Um, general uh, immune uh, infiltration, it's true in, in those organs that do reprogram. And we see that, for example, the, the intestine and the stomach, they also reprogram a lot and they also have a lot of NK cells. We haven't checked and it's true, uh, these organs that do not reprogram that much, for example, you cannot see a partial reprogram in, the, in that uh, organ. I would, I would, um, I would get, the amount of uh, NK infiltration is not that high, but just basically because we, uh, you know, uh, reprogramming goes uh, goes together with uh, uh, with damage, right? So basically, I think yeah. that upon damage there is an immune infiltration, and if this damage is not there, uh, probably there is no no immune infiltration. Yeah, damage attracts macrophages, so maybe worth a look at those babies too. Um, There's a question yeah. from. Oh, so I, I better ask a, a, another question, not one of mine. Anna Zenklusen who was the first speaker says, thanks, Elena, for your great talk. NKG2D receptors expressed in other subpopulations besides NKs. Do you know if other ILC populations play similar roles? Yes, um, we've also checked uh, for the role of T cells in our in our uh, mouse model, but because, because in fact uh, T cells are also uh, um, infiltrated, and in fact the role of T cells is indeed similarly to NK cells, so they limit the efficiency of reprogramming. But the um, effect of those uh, T cells do not happen at seven days, but at fourteen days, so a little bit later, which in fact it makes sense because the adaptive immune response uh, is always. Uh, after the innate one. So yes, T cells have a, a, a role as well and they limit the efficiency of reprogramming. Cool, lovely. I'm just looking at the time. We probably should move on. 